Thank you, Jim. Like I turned caution. Uh, she did it herself. There you go. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody here this morning. And I uh, hope you get a blessing out of today's service. As we say, it's you get out of what you put in it. And if you're come to looking for a blessing, I think you'll get one. Be much prayer for our service today for Brother Dan and uh, Tom. And also for our singing. Also those that's online, listen, hope you get a blessing out of it. If you got your bulletins this morning, open up. We'll go through those right quickly. Uh, in the prayer list this morning, especially the lost this morning, just remember those people that don't know Christ as their Lord and Savior, that we, each each one of us, and is individual, can spread God's light, His Word, to uplift someone, and hopefully that we can say something that will cause someone to give their hearts to Christ before it's everlasting too late. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He said the whole needed not a physician, but the lost, but the sick. And it's the worst thing we can have is to be sin sick today. Uh, let's remember those that's uh, in our prayer list here this morning. Uh, the families of John Harvey Hutchison. Let's remember that family. All the other names that's in our bulletins this morning. Let's be much prayer for those people. Uh, good report from Dickie this, uh, this past week. I'm glad that he had a good report from his doctor. God is still working. God is still in power. God is still on the throne. He's in the saving business, and he's in the healing business. And he's the one that we need to take our problems and our troubles and our trials to. He's always there. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So, <clears throat> we got some happy birthdays in there. Good to see that. Anniversaries. Our family group last week, we had a little fall carnival for our youth group. It was a good turnout for that. Everybody had a good time. Our men's breakfast yesterday, was uh, we had, I think, 12 yesterday, had a good meeting, and last night was our business meeting, and uh, discussed some things on that. Our family group will be having our Christmas caroling, be coming up December the 4th, that's on a Saturday afternoon, be much prayer for that also. Our annual Christmas play will be the next, the following day, December the 5th, on a Sunday, uh, we haven't set a time for that yet, so... And uh, we'll have a good turnout for that. And uh, be much prayer for that. Pardon? Yeah, and the play's going to be here in the uh, sanctuary. sanctuary here this year instead of the fellowship hall. But the uh, afterwards, uh, the uh, snacks and things will be at the fellowship hall after the play is over. So uh, we just feel that you have a better uh, sound system up here. And it's... Uh, more traditional too we for respect memories yeah, too. Yeah, memories. Yeah, it's growing up, and uh, so uh, it's been much prayer for that. And also, uh, last night we discussed that next starting next Sunday, our uh, communion will be uh, back to normal the way it was. And if there, if anybody wants to, the, it'll still be back here on the table for if you want to take that also. Uh, turn to page four fifty nine. Jimmy will lead us in our song. It's a good song. All these songs are good because they, they're scriptural. Uh, we try our best to stick to the Word of God because that's what's going to judge us, not some other book. It'll be the book that we've got before us. America needs to wake up. Amen. Amen. We are in the midst of being tried. God is speaking to this nation. Just as Jonah spoke to Nineveh, if we don't repent, we're going to perish. 
And we have nothing to do with uh, anything outside of that. It's all in his power and his hands. But we do have something to do. If you'll listen to it in this song, he says, draw nine to me and I'll draw nine to you. It's whatever we want. God will provide it. So we need to wake up. We need to fill this house. People need to be concerned about their soul because we're in the middle of trials to try your faith and the faith of this nation. Number six, 459, the song. He said, go and preach. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 15, 16. There's a message all of us have. We have friends that are not saved. Why don't we share that with them and see the love that God brings out of us toward them. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. For I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clear for I'm in the glory land way. List to the call, the gospel call today. I'm in the glory land way. Wonders come home, no place and to obey for I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth fear for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clear. For I'm in the glory land way. While you're turning to number 112. It's a good song. You get angry? I've been angry. And when you're angry, you lose control of your mind, in a sense. And you say things that are in a normal condition you wouldn't do. So my advice is just to listen to this song. Don't get angry and you won't say things you regret. It's a good little song. as a scripture for that. Uh, John 13, verse 34. It just simply says, love one another. Angry words, so let them never from the tongue unbridled slip. May the heart's best impulse ever check them ere they soil the lid. Love one another, thus saith the Savior. Children obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus saith the Savior. Children obey the flesh command. Love is but to pure and holy. Friendship is too sacred for. For a moment's reckless folly, thus to 
desolate and mar. Love one another, bless the Savior. Children, obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, bless the Savior. Children, obey His blessed command. Angry words are lightly spoken. Beatrice will Bright as sleep of life are broken by a single angry word. Love one another, thus saith the Savior. Children, obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus saith the Savior. Children, obey His blessed command. That sounded good. He commanded in the Bible to sing. That's all he said. He just said, sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. And it's good for us. Oh, we all speak. That's the reason that you have congregational singing. It's so that everybody gets involved and gets their mind and their thoughts together. 163. Huh? Uh, yeah, this will be our prayer song. It's a prayer request. Jenny, remember the family of James Elliott that was bombed last week, brother-in-law. Did you say James? James Elliott. Oh my goodness, James and I ran around together. Some good boy, good man, and he passed away. It was uh, Mary Lou's Bob. It was his brother-in-law. It's going to get out of us somewhere. Somebody going to read your obituary one of these days. Somebody going to say something about you one of these days. It's up to you what they say. You fill that gap. Nobody else can fill that but you. Anybody else? Okay, Joe, what was her first name? Myra? Myra. Myra. <clears throat> right. Uh -huh. Yes, Madge and Wiley's granddaughter. Seems like it's somebody in the paper every week, isn't it? Yeah. Jim, uh, But it's never going to happen to me. <laughs> That's the attitude a lot of people take with their life. It's never going to happen to me. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, Paul. No. Uh, a friend of mine uh, and a customer of mine... Uh, Passed away this week, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, you know, he, his wife came in and told us this Friday that he had passed away. Uh, Lester, family of Lester Jones. And, uh, what was the name? Lester. Jones. Lester Jones. Yeah. Very dear friend of mine. Paul lost a good friend. Think about it. We get too busy to think. Old Scratch is doing a good job. If you let him, he'll tangle your mind up till you don't have time to do anything. And you better take time for this one. Uh, Jimmy? Yeah. Also remember, uh, continue to remember Bill and Wanda. Okay. Yeah, Bill's been through a lot and so has Wanda. Had hip replaced. and uh, But you were out there singing to us, aren't you? They might have a muted. Bloom where you're planted. I don't care where you're at. You can do good. Jesus, that was one of the things, the hallmarks of him. The Bible says he went about doing, somebody tell me. Good. Come on, you can speak up. Don't be so tight. <clears throat> Uptight. Be happy that you're able to be here today. I've got a couple of requests. Nathan's mother-in-law. Uh, is uh, diagnosed with cancer in the lung, I think, this past week. And it looks like they're going to have a tough road down here within the next month or two. I also got a co-worker that's a young man, 37 years old, that's going to have to go into some major surgery and a nerve way down in his neck or in his shoulder or whatever. He's going to have to be opened up pretty big. So 
keep those two in your prayers. Okay. Nathan's uh, mother-in-law and Joe's co-worker. Tell me what you're going to do tomorrow. You can't. You cannot tell me what you're going to do tomorrow. You can tell me what you have planned for tomorrow, but you may never able to get the chance to do it. Someone may say, maybe, maybe God's been speaking to you. Maybe over a period of time. What happens if he doesn't today? You got a problem. That's the only way you can ever be saved is for God to call you. And if that ever stops, you've got a problem. Now think about this. I mean, we're talking, we're talking deep stuff here when you're talking about people's soul and where you're going to live when you die. That's pretty deep stuff. We need to think on it. Somebody did him something. I'm sorry. Remember Wally? Um, he has COVID again. He had it in January. He's had all of his vaccines. And didn't even have any idea he had it. And he was preparing for an upper or lower GI series and had the COVID test that was positive. <coughs> He's got a few symptoms now, but not bad. Okay. Remember Tammy's husband, Wally? Sharon's Sharon's son-in-law. Jimmy, remember my brother Junior? Uh, they found some places on his lungs. There will be some biopsies here shortly to see exactly what it is. But uh, remember him. Uh, remember Tim's brother, uh, Leonard Holbrook Junior. I'm telling you, folks. Uh, it's gonna get us all. Remember Mike and Lisa Fife. Uh, Lisa's home now that she's got major surgery ahead of her. And Mike is uh, in rehabilitation. Is what, Sharon Linda? I can't say the word. Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Mike Fife, you wanted something done in basketball? Mike could take care of it in the middle. He was a big, chunky boy. He knew how to move around. About the same time you deserve, Tom Steve. <laughs> oh, I, think so. I, think I, I think I got a couple years on here. Oh, okay. Maybe it's after you was gone. See, that's part of my memory, man. Hey, you've got to make your life. Don't wait for somebody to do it for you. Make it. Make it. And make it happy. Anybody else? I've done took too much time, maybe. I'm not going to apologize for it. I said what God wanted me to say out of this pulpit this morning. If you're wrestling... With the Spirit, you better do it today because tomorrow if he walks off and leaves you, you got trouble. We got good news from some of Lori's tests. Uh, she's got some more yet to go, but good news so far. Okay. And Denise Krolikowski, uh, my granddaughter Caitlin's future mother-in-law, she's been... Um, fighting lung cancer for several years and she just found out that her insurance uh, will not cover any treatments anymore. They told her that she had reached her lifetime limit and so she doesn't really know what she's going to do. So. Okay, remember Lori, it's some test back, good report and uh, I, I hope everybody heard you on the second sharing because I I couldn't. So we need to speak up. Denise Krolikowski is her name. Okay, and that's the reason I asked you that. <laughs> <laughs> she has lung cancer. Hey, you know, I feel for anybody that has trouble with lungs. I watched my brother uh, go through almost a year, and it, it's a horrible death. It is horrible when you can't breathe and you grasp for air. How many of us think the air that he gives us every day? I think about it, because my, my lungs are weak too, and uh, COVID uh, likes your lungs. It's good, good meat to eat. That's the way I look at it. Whatever comes, bring it on. Bring it on. If you can't do that today as a Christian, you better get on your knees tonight at home and say, God, strengthen me. We're in the middle of a crisis. And God 
is the only solution. Only solution. Anyone else? I didn't mean to get started preaching. Jimmy, if you'll continue to remember Delma, she goes back to the doctor this week for her results. She did get some news when she had her PET scan. It's not the best of news, but it could have been worse. And she's probably looking at more chemo and radiation. Okay. Remember, uh, Delma, uh, here I go. Last name, please. Whit. Whit. What? Whit. Delma Whit, and I know her as good as I know you. That girl's been struggling for a year or two. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, Keep Jamie Burton in your prayers. Jamie, pray for my cousin Janet Long. She has lung cancer, and um, they can't do any more chemo, no more radiation for her. Um, and it, that's in God's hands now. There's nothing else they can do, so. Okay, that's Leanne's cousin, mm -hmm. Janet Long. Get you a good deep breath before you start on this song. And the title of it is Near to the Heart of God. There are things that's near to the heart of God. And our scripture for that is found in James 4, 8. Here you go. Here's the pattern. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Whose move is it? Is it yours? Think about it. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sin from the heart of God. Hold us away before Thee, near to the heart of God. of comfort sweet near to the heart of God a place where we your Savior meet near to the heart of God oh Jesus bless Redeemer sent from the heart of God oh sense it today but the Holy Spirit's here. Amen. And he's moving around. In Matthew 6 and 6 it says but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut the door we need to shut the things of the world out in our mind and we need to focus and concentrate on a conversation with the Lord. Pray to the Father which is in secret and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. This time I'll watch Brother Tim Holbrook if you'll come and lead us in word prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to come to you this morning, dear Lord, that all the blessings of you have gave us, gave everyone here, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for that blessings. All the prayer requests that we've had here today, dear Heavenly Father, just help them 
Let the people that's being requested for uh, come to you, dear Heavenly Father. Get them in your lives, dear Lord. And we just pray that they will take you and in their hearts, dear Lord. And uh, I'm sorry. Just We just can't thank you enough for the blessings that you do for us, dear Heavenly Father that we take for granted. But we know in our hearts, dear Heavenly Father, that you're the one that we come to and talk to, dear Heavenly Father. Yes. Just want to thank you so much. Give us a good day, church, here today, Heavenly Father. Give us the blessings that we know that we can get from you, dear Lord, because I feel you in this church today, dear Heavenly yes. Father. Amen. Just can't thank you enough. Let us have a good day. Bless the speakers here today. Give them the wisdom that that may come. Be pleasing to you. We ask this all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 He has promised us blessings, but we have to take hold of them. We can't be shy about that. This morning, uh, our song will be 312 for our communion. Uh, if you came in a little later next Sunday, we will start passing the communion and the offering tray during the service as we have before. If you feel uncomfortable with that, there will still be packets back there uh, that you can get and obtain and, and do your uh, communion yourself. So we, we want to make that available to you. But that will begin next Sunday, Lord will. This morning in Matthew 26, beginning in verse 26, it says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood for the New Testament, of the New Testament, which is shed for... Uh, many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. This is song. Yeah, church song will be number 312. It's a good song. Put your place in his shoes. Put your place. Get into this song. Put yourself in his place. It'll mean so much more to you. Hey, before we start singing, uh -huh. I went to get me a cup, and it was empty. There's more back there now. If somebody didn't get one. Okay. Okay. There's, Check. Back. There's more back there. Check your cup if you've got the packet. Make sure it's got uh, fruit of the vine in it. It said, Oh, my Father, if it be possible... Let this cup pass from me, Matthew 26, 39. It was not possible. And the same cup that he drank, we're to drink of today symbolically. Precious time. Put yourself in his shoes. In the garden so oppressed, Jesus uttered this request. Father, if it so may be, let this cup depart from me. In the garden, how he moaned, weeping there so bitterly. Yet the awful cup will drink for you and me. Judas now with traitor tears. He is into his enemies. See that wild and noisy crowd. They will kill the Son of God. In the garden, how he moaned, weeping there so bitterly. Yet the awful cup will drink for you. Now the Jewish council tries and resolve that he shall.
shall die. He of witness for the praise is to pilot lit away. In the garden, how we moan, weeping there so bitterly. Yet the awful cup would drink for you and me. Robe and crown in mockery, and the taunting soldier see. See him now on Calvary's road. Sinking knee is heavy load in the garden. How he moaned, weeping there so bitterly. Yet the awful cup would drink for you and me. View him now upon the cross, us to save from bitter loss. Dying there upon the tree, dying there for you and me. In the garden, how he moaned, weeping there so bitterly. Yet the awful cup of drink for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we truly thank you, Lord God, for the many blessings, Lord, that you've bestowed upon us. Most of all, dear God, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son to die upon the cross of Calvary for our sins. We run our minds backwards, Heavenly Father, Lord, and remember the suffering, the anguish, the torture that you went through. That your body was broken for our sins. Help us, dear God, Lord, to remember that sacrifice, Lord, that you made for us. Not just today, Heavenly Father, Lord, but each and every day that we live. The love that you had for us. We thank you, dear God, Lord, for being that supreme sacrifice. So we partake of this bread that represents your body. Let's partake of this, Lord, in remembrance of you. And if there be anything between us at this time, that you will forgive us. Take it away. In Christ's name we pray. Take it away. Take that sin away. Amen. bow our heads. As we continue, dear Heavenly Father, in our thankfulness for you, as we're partaking of this communion, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this fruit of the vine that represents that blood that was shed on Calvary that will cleanse us from all sin. We pray today, dear Heavenly Father, if there's something between you and us that we could be forgiven, we pray that we each in our own individual hearts ask, dear Heavenly Father, for our sins to be taken care of. We take this, we hope, in a manner which is pleasing to you, in Christ's name. Amen. scripture from Galatians 16, the first two chapters. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. So at this time, um, we will sing 120. The offering plate is in the back if you want to put something in, if you have it on the way out. Are you on the rock this morning? Or are you sinking in sand? One of the two. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. And that rock was Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand o'er other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. 
When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds wet in the veil. Oh, Christ the solid rock, I stand on other ground, is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered, not his blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When ye shall come with the trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. take just a moment of Dan's time. I'm sitting there watching those children going down, wondering how many ministers are going downstairs right now. I want to read you a couple of verses. Uh, I want to read, in the first P or in Second Peter, the first chapter. It's funny that the Lord had given me this, and then we uh, we studied about it in Sunday school this morning. Starting in the fifth verse, it said, "And beside this, giving all diligence." We talked about what kind of grade do you want to make in Christianity today in Sunday school? Do you just want to make a D and pass and get by, or do you want to be a little more diligent and try to get closer to God and to know more about Him so that when you spend eternity with Him, you'll know what it's like? It says, add to your faith virtue and to virtue of knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you all that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are participating in these things. Verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. If, if you're not participating in this, you don't understand what the Spirit of God is. It says, And cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fail. What is it that we have to do to make our calling and election sure? Go back and read, beginning in verse 5. We need to be doing those things, and it says diligently. We need to be doing that, not haphazard, not when it's convenient to us, when the world doesn't have something for us to do, but we need to put God first and be doing these things. At this time, Brother Dan, bring you a message. Thank you, Brother Tom. And uh, good to see everybody here today. Uh, hope and pray that something is uh, said or done here today that might get you closer to the Lord. Uh, if you're not a Christian today, maybe something will come to you, Lord, come to you today that will help you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be obedient to His Word. I want to begin today in uh, John chapter 16, and I want to begin with verse 25. I'm going to read through the the end of chapter 16 here to give you an idea of uh, where Jesus is with his apostles. And uh, then I want to preach from uh, John chapter 17. Verse 25 of John 16. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh 
when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Jesus is speaking to the apostles here. This is shortly after they had, uh, he had set the Lord's Supper. Shortly after the Last Supper, the Passover meal that they had before he was crucified the next day. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I shall not unto you, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. Jesus said he's not going to pray for him. But he says, for the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and I and have obeyed that I came out from God, and have believed that I have came out from God. Jesus isn't praying for him now, he says. He does pray for him in chapter 17. But they are loved by the Father. They can pray to the Father. We too, today, we don't have to go through a priest like they did in Old Testament times. We pray to the Father. And as we pray to the Father, we pray through Jesus Christ or in the name of Jesus Christ or by the authority by, of Jesus Christ. Amen. I came forth from the Father and I am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Jesus knew what was about to happen. Jesus knew what was going to be going on the next day. You know, Jimmy said, we don't know and we don't. We do have plans probably, but we don't know what will happen yet. Jesus knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speaketh no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. But this we believe, that thou camest forth from God. They believed, they understood that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and he came from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own. The apostles preached throughout, throughout the kingdom at that time, throughout the country at that time. They went different places. You know, on the day of Pentecost, we have Peter's sermon. We sit and we read that 3,000 souls were saved. But the other apostles were also speaking that same day. It said they were all speaking. That the first part of it, they all spoke in tongues as, the, as they were given utterance. They spoke in these foreign languages, every one of them. So there were, they were all preaching and teaching God's word. There were, there were actually a, a couple million people there. So they, there would have been several groups of people being taught. He said, but you're going your own way now and shall leave me alone. When Jesus went to the cross, we know John was there with, with Jesus, his mother Mary. Peter was kind of in the distance someplace, but he denied that he knew Jesus. Jesus was left alone. And he said, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we're able to be here today, Lord. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful, Lord, that it was put in print that we all might be able to look at it and study it ourselves. I pray, Lord, that you'll give me the strength to, to preach this message here today, Lord, that everybody within hearing distance, Lord, might get something from it, that they might be lifted up, that we all might be closer to you. Mm -hmm. These things I pray in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> Chapter 17. Now, this is continuing, okay? It, it appears to me that the apostles were still there while he prayed this prayer. You'll see at the end, they're still there. They're with him. John wrote what this said. Was it because he heard it? 
Or did the Holy Spirit give him all of it? I don't know. But we know this is Jesus' prayer. And John and the other apostles, I believe, were, were there with him as this happened. It says in 17, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes unto heaven. Jesus looked toward the heavens to his father. And he said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. He knew what was about to happen this hour. He was about to go to the cross and he wanted to glorify. He wanted his, his father to glorify him so that he might glorify the Father. Jesus Christ glorified the Father. In Hebrews 2, verse 9, we're told, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen. Jesus Christ died for us. Jesus Christ knew what was about to happen, and he wanted to be glorified. He asked God to glorify him because his glory would glorify the Father. And that happened when Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was glorified, which glorified the Father. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, Jesus speaking of himself as him here, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. He did give him power over all flesh. In, in Matthew 28, 13, he says, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. That's right. All power was given to Jesus Christ. And he told his apostles at that time, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. Verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was sent by God into this world. He, he was born as an infant, just the same way we are. We start out in life as a newborn. Jesus started out in life the same way. He studied the scriptures. We know at the age of 12, he was teaching others about, Jesus, about the, the word of God. He was teaching others about God's love, about God's mercy, about God's judges, just, justice. Jesus Christ was sent by God. He says, and I have glorified thee in earth. Jesus Christ was obedient to God, even unto death. Jesus Christ gave his life on that cross as his obedience to God. Again, he, he went around the earth. He was preaching. He was telling others about the Lord and especially the apostles. They were with him for three years as he continued to preach and teach the word of God. And he says, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Jesus was ready to be crucified. And he's speaking to the Father about that crucifixion. He's ready. He's telling his Father that he's ready. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Mm -hmm. He preached love. He set up the, the principles of of what the, his church would be. He did all the things that God wanted him to do. We're told that uh, he was human. He had life just like us. He was tempted in all ways like we are, but he was without sin. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Before the world was. Before the creation of the world, Jesus was in heaven with the Father. Amen. That's right. Jesus was glorified. And he wants to be glorified like that again. Philippians 2, verse 7 says, But made himself of no reputation, 
and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus Christ didn't just become man. He became a, a servant. He did what he could for men. He healed the sick. He made the blind see, the lame walk. Jesus Christ did all of these things. He did it for the Father, and he did it for us, and he died on that cross because he loved us that much. He goes on and he said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. He started off by praying for himself. Now he's praying for his apostles. I have made it manifested thy name unto the, unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. And I, I, this right here, this verse is one that tells me that the apostles were there, the 11. That's what he mentions here. He said, these men, no, they've accompanied me. They've done all the things that they, they're supposed to do. They, they believe that I am your son, and they're ready to serve the Father as Jesus had done. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. They know that the miracles that Jesus worked, Jesus didn't say, I'm doing this on my own. He always gave the glory to God mm -hmm. whenever he did any of those things. And these men witnessed this for three years. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. Again, they knew that Jesus Christ was the promised Messiah from Old Testament times. He was the Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray for them, he says. I pray not for the world at this time, is what he's talking about. He does pray for the world. Uh, but at this time, he's praying specifically for his apostles but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. We see the oneness of Jesus and God right here. They're together on all things. And these apostles understand that. And these apostles are continuing with the work that Jesus began. They will continue to tell people about the love of God. They will continue to tell people about judgment and the other things that Jesus preached about. And now I am no more in the world. He knew, he's looking at, at the next day, he knew he was leaving, he was going to be put to death. But these are in the world, and I come to thee. Jesus Christ is returning to the Father. But the apostles are still in the world. Remember the last verse of chapter 16. These things I have spoken unto you that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. You know, this is said to the apostles. The apostles that were in prison because they preached Jesus Christ. The apostles who were beaten. The apostles who rejoiced. Because they were counted worthy enough to suffer for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. In the same manner that Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit are one, they're one in purpose. They have the same ideas on different things. They continue. And the apostles, he's praying, will also be one in them. That the things that they say and the things that they do will be according to what Jesus had taught them. According to what the Holy Spirit leads them in. And in chapter 16, in scripture before where I began reading, Jesus tells them that the Comforter is going to come and tell them all things. So they had the Holy Spirit working with them as well. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 
because he was lost. The scripture had been fulfilled. He said, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus Christ knew the joy of being in heaven because that's where he was in the beginning before the earth was created. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of God. Mm. That's the joy that he knew was coming to him. And he was asking for that same joy for his apostles. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in the name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You know, as Christians today... We shouldn't expect everybody to love us because we're Christians. There are people that are very anti-Christ out there. There are people that don't want to have anything to do with the Lord. And as Christians, we have to realize these people aren't going to like us. You can look overseas and see that Christians are being put to death because of their beliefs. It's spreading. It's something that will continue throughout the world. It's going to hit here. We know that we have to stand up for Jesus Christ. We know that we're going to have difficult times. We know that the Lord is there for us. He will continue to be with us. But we need to do our part. We need to continue to spread the word of God and tell others about Jesus Christ. Verse 15 says, And I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world. He didn't pray for the apostles to leave the world and go with him to heaven. But they needed to stay in the world. You know, I, I thought, you know, when, when a person becomes a Christian, wouldn't it be great that, that you just go right on to heaven when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Mm -hmm. No, it sounds good. But what if that happened to the apostles? We wouldn't even have the word. None of us would know about it. We too need to continue in this world after we accept Christ so that we can spread the word, so that we can tell others about the hope that is in us. That they too might accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's what we need to be doing here as Christians, is telling others about the Lord. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that, that, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Brother Tom read from Matthew chapter 6 today, and following what he read, they had uh, the prayer that we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. I'm actually in the Lord's, the largest prayer that we have. He prayed a lot of times, and one time we're even told that he prayed all night long. Jesus Christ prayed. He prayed regularly with the Father, and it was, it was a conversation like what Tom was talking about. He had a conversation with God, his Father. And that's the way we need to pray to the Lord. In uh, chapter 6 of Matthew, though, in that, that prayer that he taught us how to pray is what it is. He says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that's exactly the same thing here that he's asking for the apostles. Thou shouldst keep them from evil. We draw nigh to God. When we draw nigh to God, the evil things, the temptations that are around us that come our way, we can get rid of them mm -hmm. by drawing nigh to God, by reading his word, by praying, by singing hymns, by being nice to other people, all the things that we mentioned in Sunday school today. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The apostles were no longer of the world. They were Christians. They were serving the Lord. They were serving God. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. To sanctify means to set apart. Set them apart. Make them whole, holy. Make them pure. When we become Christians,
Christians, we are different than the people of the world. We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we start living for him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In uh, verse 32 of John 8, Jesus said, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We will know the word, and the word will make us free. But that is conditional. The first part of that sentence is in the previous verse. It says, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If we don't continue in the word, we're no longer his disciples. We're no longer set free by the word if we don't continue in it. That's why it's so important that we continue to pray, we continue to study God's word and read it, continue to, to assemble. These things are things we need to do to stay close to God, to continue in his word. Verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And we know that he had sent them into the world you look on the front of our uh, bulletin, Mark 16, 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus sent them into the world to preach to every creature, to tell everybody about the love of God. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Separated, set apart through the truth. Jesus Christ was separated and set apart and holy and blessed. Neither pray I for these alone. He's not just praying for the apostles. It says, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Every Christian in here is included in this prayer. Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is praying for each one of us that have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Those that shall believe on me through their word. Through this word, the word that we have right in front of us, the truth, God's word. That they all may be one. Again, there's that oneness in the same way that he prayed that the apostles might have the same purpose as, as himself and the Father. He prays that we have that same purpose, that we all might be one, that we all might have the same thoughts and understandings of what the scripture tells us that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. 1 Corinthians 1.10, the church at Corinth was having trouble with being of one mind. And Paul wrote to them, beginning or verse 10, chapter 1, says, Now I beseech you, or I beg you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Mm -hmm. This is important. Why? Look at the last part of that verse. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. When all the people that claim to be Christians are doing different things, how can the world believe that they were sent, that, that Jesus was sent by God? We have people that say, uh, now, if, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not a Christian. I had an inmate come to me one time and say, I, you know, I accepted the Lord. I, I thought I did everything I needed to do, but this, this preacher that we got on whatever night it was, he says I'm not a Christian because I can't speak in tongues. He tried to make me speak in tongues in front of the whole congregation. He said, just go ahead and do it. Let loose. And he said, I can't do it. You know, sometimes these things that people claim that that aren't even in the scriptures it'll make other people think well i can't do what they're doing i'm not good enough christ never accepted me i didn't receive salvation when i thought i did it's important that we stay in the word that we get things right there's people that will tell you hey say this prayer and you can be a christian you might pick up a tract sometime and it says, read this prayer and sign your name and you'll be a Christian. We need to go to God's word. 
We need to hear that word. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That's right. It's the gospel of Christ. That's what gives us the power. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We are told in 2 Thessalonians that we are called by the gospel. It's the gospel that calls us to the Lord. It's because we've read or we've heard what the gospel says. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. We have the New Testament. This one that he's talking about here includes us as Christians. We need to be of one mind. I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me again. The purpose of it is it so that the world may know. People look at all these different denominations and look at all the different things that they, they believe. How can they all be one when there's 30 different ways to become a Christian? How do we know? We've got to go to God's word. There were actually a couple of denominations back in the early 1800s that said we need to go back to God's word. We need to get rid of our statements of faith. We need to get rid of our creeds. Amen. Those things that were written by men, let's just pitch them out. And let's go to God's word. Let's follow God's word. Let's follow what God's word says to do and not worry about the things that's not in there. Let's not make stuff up anymore. If we can't find it in God's word, we don't do it. We don't believe it. We have to go to God's word. How else can we be one in mind with the Father and the Son but to follow his word? That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. We know the love of the Father. He gave up his son. What father in here, or even mother for that matter, would give up a child, one of their own children? To save anybody else. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me from the foundation of the world. Again, from the very beginning. And Jesus says he wants us to share in that glory. Jesus wants us to be there with him. Verse 3 of chapter 14. Jesus said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Jesus Christ wants us to share in the glory of heaven, the glory that he knew before he came here in the first place, the glory that he was returning back to, and the glory where he is right now as our king. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. We know that. We know that Jesus Christ was sent by the Father, that he was born of a virgin. And he says, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast given me may be in them, and I in them. The love of Jesus Christ needs to be in each and every one of us. How can we, how can people know that the love of Christ is in us? We're to be the light of the world. We're to tell other people about the Lord. We need to share that love. We can share it through the things I mentioned a little bit ago, being kind to others by telling others about the Lord, sharing him with other people. I want to read a few verses here in chapter 18 as well, just to give you an idea of exactly where this was. He said this prayer. I believe the apostles were right there with him when he said it. And then it says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. He entered into this garden, and we know from other uh, gospels, that he prayed three times, Lord, please take this cup from me. 
But he said, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus didn't want to have to endure all that pain and suffering. But he looked at the will of the Father. And he loved us enough to give his life for us. To lay down his life. No man took it. Goes on and says, And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with the disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You might want to continue reading that. It's a real good chapter. You may even want to back up and get all of 16. There's a lot of good, a lot of good in the, in the Word there and throughout the Bible. I hope and pray that something was said here today that might bring you a little closer to God, knowing that He <coughs> prays for us is important. We need to pray for each other as well. Right. At this time, we're going to have our song of invitation, Washing the Blood. I believe it is power and blood <clears throat> if you believe that Jesus is the Christ the son of God or you've heard the word and you do believe this you need to repent that's asking Jesus to help you turn your life around and start living for him and you can do that right where you are just as Saul of Tarsus I believe his repentance began on the road to Damascus but he didn't receive salvation until three days later when he was told to arise and be baptized and wash away his sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Three days of fasting and praying. No, he didn't pray through. He had to get up from his prayers and be baptized. We also, we need to confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and be baptized for remission of sins. If you would like to confess him before man, we'll give you that opportunity here at the conclusion of our service. If you'd like to be baptized for remission of sins, we can certainly assist with that. It's not something you do, by the way. Baptism is something you submit yourself to, and somebody else will do the baptizing. And then, as the rest of us, we need to continue faithful till the end. 613. Let's stand. This is a good song. <coughs> it's very powerful. Uh, I was sitting there thinking about the same words that I heard 60 years ago in this very house when me and my wife got off of our seat and we had wrestled with sin and we came to the master and that same word today has thundered across this place and it has touched men and women's life. It's up to you how you want to live but there's a judgment in front of you. Could this be the very generation? that we read about in the prophecies of Revelation. Think about it. Be close to your Lord and rejoice. There's been a good spirit here today. And we're going to sing a powerful song. Listen to it and do what it says. <clears throat> Revelation 1 verse 5. Washed from our sins in his own blood. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? Cleansing blood of the your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb are you walking down
daily by the Savior's side. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Pure and white in the blood of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the, blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hope and pray that you got something from the message today that you're able to take with you this week to, to help others know more about Jesus Christ to be able to spread the word. Anyone have a word before we dismiss? Yeah, I want to say that there's a, tonight we're going to start our play practice at 5. Uh, we're going to give us a little more time because it's only got a few weeks until the actual play. So anybody that's interested, if you'll come out at 5, we're going to get started on that, and we'd love to have everybody that's here to help. Okay, 5 o'clock for practice for the Christmas program this year, which will be on Sunday, the first Sunday in May, 5th? Mm -hmm. yeah, first no, Sunday in May. It's in the bulletin. <laughs> what month did I say? <laughs> May? May's a good month. And <laughs> give us a little more time, wouldn't it? <laughs> you might have snow on night. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long morning. <laughs> I had that extra hour. Anybody else have a word? Good message. Will the Bible study still be at six? Yes. Here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do we yeah. need to switch, Amber? No, we're still going to have these meetings at six down there. But okay. We're going to have play practice at five. Here. No. no we'll have play practice. Okay. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Now that last Sunday beforehand, we may need to switch around just so we know what we're doing and all that. But okay. that way, know. you guys can still use. We can it. plug in down there too, right? I don't know. I that's that's who I'm looking at. <laughs> we can we can still plug in for Sunday night service down at the fellowship hall, can't we? Uh, there's no Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi doesn't reach that far. Okay, or we could out in the parking lot. <laughs> Hey. Yeah. Should be able to in the basement. Yeah. Should be able to in the basement, like Joe was saying, yeah. Okay. We don't want to take away from you guys, but probably uh, the last one we would like. I know. We no, we we wanna I I I noticed several of us that participate Sunday night in the Bible study or signed up to help with the Christmas program, so so I know we can get things worked out. We always do. Anyone else have a word? A great message, Dan. Thank that you, was a revival message right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it cut me to the heart. <laughs> it would cut any Christian to the heart. And it ought to be softening up some hardened hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brother Jackie, would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to gather here and hear thy word. 
We pray now that we take thy word and strengthen our souls and let our light shine as we go out into this world. We ask that you remember all the requests that were given here this morning, spoken and unspoken. You know what's on everybody's hearts and their minds. We pray now that you be with the leaders of this world, from the greatest to the smallest, as they look for you for strength and guidance as they make decisions for us. We pray that if there's anything between us that you please forgive us for. And also we ask in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 We need to find out. There were four lines. Well, that includes us. One, two.